Hello, movie trivia schmodown universe. We are so excited for season eight. Season eight is the biggest season that we have ever done. And we have launched the schmodown faction merch. That is right. Faction merch from all eight factions. They are available now. You like swag? Well, get a swag hoodie. Put on that hat with corruption hat. Put the shirt on. Get the championship design. Anytime you purchase faction merch, a percentage of the profits go into a pool. It is going to contribute to what the factions are playing for. Hell, I want to see them playing for $100,000, $200,000, $300,000. I want to see them playing for what they are able to play for, what they have deserved to play for. Who's the faction I'm supporting? Who do I want to win? And I get it. So head on over to the Skybound store now. The link is in the description of this video. If you're watching your favorite factions and you know when they're going to be competing, Put on the shirt, put on the hoodie, put on the hat, and let us know. Take some pictures, tweet it out, hashtag Schmodown, and we will retweet it and show everybody who you are supporting. Enjoy the match, enjoy the merch, and we'll see you next time. And new team champions once again. And new singles champion of the world. That's cool too. That's cool too. And new inner geekdom schmodown champion of the world. Hold on, hold on. Slow down there. Slow your roll, Dickie Do, okay? For the first two of those, if you want to go play in your little fantasy land, go ahead, all right? Be my guest. But don't start pretending that one victory over me, by accident, by the way, puts you at my class in IG, okay? Because it doesn't. You have no class. <laughs> uh, the fluke accent. You, you still riding that horse? That's adorable. Now, Robert, something that you may not understand by now, because frankly, I just don't think you do. This ain't the failings anymore. You might have had it over me and a lot of other people down there. Not anymore. Because, yeah, let's look at your history, Robert. You came in, 10th overall pick. Supposed to be this big, new, IG, scary threat guy. And how'd that work out again? How many titles did you win your rookie year? Meanwhile, I came in. I was a relative unknown. I was supposed to win a belt. And what have I done so far? Won two of them. Working on three. <laughs> so, look, let me just paint you a picture. We're talking the monarchy of fan league players, turn from competitors. You're uh, there. That's where you are. Uh, maybe like a low-ranking court jester, prince, maybe a duke if you're lucky. Meanwhile, where am I? Right here, baby. King. <laughs> Everybody wants to be the king. Okay. Uh, kings fall, kings rise, kings follow. If you're the king, that means I'm the emperor. Okay? <laughs> uh, last time, Chance, when you beat me, it was a stone-cold fluke. And I'm about to prove that here today, all right? All right, fine. You want to keep calling my win a fluke? I can beat you a second time. Cobras eat spiders for breakfast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the movie trivia schmodown. This is such, this is the part of the season, Mark Ellis, that I get so excited about because we start to get these matches. Yeah, we got the big three pay-per-views a month and you get all those high profile, big, huge matches. But because there's so many of them happening throughout the season, you get matches that wind up live to the public on public release. And this is one of them. This is an inner geekdom battle. And it's a rematch, and it's a feud that's been going on for way before the Schmodown. It, it started in the fan leagues, and it's transferred over into the Schmodown, and that, of course, is the inner geekdom battle between the Cobra, Chance Ellison, and the Spider, Robert Parker. Yeah, intertwining family names aside, this does feel like Batman v Superman in the world of inner geekdom. That's why Christian and I wore our Sunday best and I drank a full canister of TGRI mutagen before this match because we're going to need every ounce of our ability to keep up with these two. The answers come fast, they come furious, and they're generally accurate.
Yeah, there's so much to this match because the winner of this match is going to go on to play the former champion, Chandru, uh, the Chosen, in a number one contender match. And this is going to be a battle for Chance Ellison for sure that he's been looking forward to because he's already defeated Robert Parker in the Schmodown. When Parker came in, he was this unbeatable rookie, and they met in the tournament, and Chance took the victory, and then Chance went on and wound up losing to Chandru at the Spectacular for the championship, but Parker was left stewing and getting angry and getting better, and he showed that again when he came back against Brandon Hanna, who he took care of fairly easily and TKO'd him. So you know that Parker wants revenge you know that ellison wants to prove that that there's because i think parker even said that it was a fluke and ellison's like well i beat you in the fan leagues before that wasn't a fluke and it wasn't a fluke when i beat you in in the schmodown so this is going to be a hell of a battle it's corruption who needs it and it's the dungeon who's trying to add to that big lead so um this this is exciting partner yeah, dare I mix my metaphors from DC now over to Marvel, but it's like Parker. I don't know if he has the beard, but he's like bearded Captain America. He's got a dark side to him that he's looking to tap into to take down Chance Ellison. But when you think of dark side, when you think of Sith, you think corruption. So it goes even bigger than these two great competitors. It goes corruption versus the dungeon. The dungeon on top right now, corruption, looking to close that faction gap. There's a whole lot of history with these two, with these two factions. And here's a little look at just some of that. I'm here to deliver a message. Not on behalf of Kaiser, but on behalf of the entire dungeon. I'm here to take this division by storm. And I'm ready to take on anybody they're willing to throw at me. I'm not just here to play in it, I'm here to dominate it. The entire dungeon is here to dominate it. Uh -huh. Hello, Robert. I was just thinking back to last year, how you said you were going to be this big new thing in IG. You were going to be the it factor. You were going to be the one who went straight to the belts in your rookie year. And then I shut down that show. <laughs> Chance beats Parker. Kalinowski beats Smets. Looks like Corruption's got the dungeon's number. We did it again. Sit down and shut up. We all saw what happened to Kevin Smets when he took a loss. Absolutely. Came back hungrier. Came back with more fire in his belly. You know... Last time I played Chance, it was devastating. It was heartbreaking. I was broken after that match last year. But guess what? I picked myself up, I built myself back up, and I'm a new player now. Yeah, I would love to play Chance, and I think if I played him 10 times, I genuinely think I would beat him 8 or 9 of them. So when it comes down to it, I got the best bodyguards money can buy, I got the best team money can buy, and there ain't a damn thing corruption can do about it. Oh, yay me. I get to spend the next hour of my time listening to Kaiser talk in nonsensical circles. He doesn't need any confidence. He came into this league a lethal, lethal man. All he needs from me is the guidance of someone who knows how to win championship belts. And that's how you become a big deal in this league. You saw what I did to Brandon Hanna, Chance? Now it's your turn. Everybody in the Schmodown, including Roxy, has got to go through the dungeon this year. I'm doing it for myself, and I'm doing it for Kaiser, and I'm doing it for the dungeon. And that's exactly how we're going to carry it out for the rest of this entire season. You're saying you're going to go on this run, and you're not going to miss a question. You're going to steamroll everybody who's in front of you, and I'm in front of you. One thing I can think about you in this situation is that you haven't learned a damn thing. Look, I get it. You played a perfect match. Congratulations. You're focused. Da, 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 da. But you've kind of hit or miss, Parker. And chance is always on. So maybe it's you who should be afraid. If you think my win last year was a fluke, you're wrong. You're wrong. And if you think we are ever going to hand you that belt, <laughs> well, you know the rest. I am here to secure my rise to the title and to take that belt off Mike's waist, bring it back home where it belongs, to the dungeon. And I have the best crew to help me do it.
Yeah, you know, when you look at that promo and when you see it, um, you forget how much history these two have because Ellison was one of the first – maybe even the first of the fan league competitors come out and have a lot of success. Parker was this just godlike figure in the fan leagues that everyone's like, oh, when's he getting there? When's he getting there? When's he getting there? And he finally does. And his accuracy is out of control. It's in the high 90s. But because of that loss, ah, overrated, overrated. He's not overrated. He's a phenomenal player, and he's one of the best IG players that we've ever seen. But when you lose, you want to get your revenge. But if Ellison can get it done again, then he's going to have that thing over Parker where he's like, yeah, you might be good, but you just can't beat me. Yeah, one's got a pocket watch that's going to help him tell time. The other has steely cobra eyes hidden beneath sunglasses. What are we going to see today? I don't know who's going to win, Christian, but I know it's going to be one hell of a matchup. Speaking of pocket watches, speaking of time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Moofy Trivia Schmodown. Three rounds in the Inner Geekdom Division. Introducing first, representing the dungeon with a record of three wins, one defeat, and two knockouts. He is the Spider Robert Parker. The Spider. Robert Parker is here. Robert, as I mentioned to you earlier, I know the history that has gone down with Ellison, and I know that that victory that he had over you last year, it stuck in your craw. You were not happy with it. Is this almost like getting to a title match for you? Uh, it, it will get there. It will feel like title match just because of the vindication, right? He beat me last year, and fair and square, right? I was not as prepared as I should have been for that day. I am much more prepared today. All right, I'm looking forward to go on from here and win every single match that I have for the rest of this season, okay? I go on here, after this I play Chandru. All right, that's a new match, that's new blood. People wanna see that, all right? The dungeon's not done with Chandru yet. Nobody wants to see Chance whiff another match against Chandru, all right? He had his shot, all right? It's the revenge tour time, it's my time. Okay, Robert, we've seen your accuracy over the brief time, relatively. You've been in the Schmodown. We've seen your competitive spirit, even in a tough loss. And we've even seen a taste of your athleticism at a live event once upon a time. But don't you think you're getting a little ahead of yourself already thinking about Chandra when you have quite a formidable opponent that you're facing today? I do. I'm taking this one question at a time, but everybody thinks of the future, right? Everybody thinks of what's the next thing, what's the next story, all right? And I know what that is for me. And yes, I, I am in the moment right now. I'm as zen as I have ever been, and that should scare Chance. You know, and speaking of which, obviously the dungeon having great success this year, and you, uh, we know what you want to do against Chance and how this is going to be a, a big victory for you should you attain it. Um, but it's that championship, right? That's, that's, that's the thing that you have been wanting, I think, before you were even a competitor in this league. So do you feel that this year this is your year and that you will be the champion um, at some point in the season? I really do. I really do think that that belt will be around my waist above my head uh, by the end of the season. And if I have to go through chance to get it, I absolutely will. If I have to go through Changer to get it, I absolutely will. No matter how many people I have to beat to make that happen, that has always been my goal. Uh, I'm here for the dungeon. I'm here for Kaiser. And I'm here to put that belt around my own waist as well, right? Well, good luck to you, Robert, the Spider Parker. We'll see you in just a moment. And his opponent representing corruption with a record of four wins two defeats in the inner geekdom division he is the former two-time movie trivia schmodown teams champion of the world and the 2020 inner geekdom tournament winner he is the Cobra Chance Ellison! The Cobra Chance Ellison, who has already picked up a victory uh, in the singles division in the individual performance. Now, 
chance as you get into Inner Geekdom, you had a hell of a run. You entered the Inner Geekdom tournament last year because your faction needed you. They wanted you to compete. Not only did you win it, you took out Mike Kalinowski in the finals, but you also took out Robert Parker, the unbeatable, <laughs> who was supposed to be unbeatable, and you defeated him. So since then, I know Parker's been talking. I know he's continued to talk, saying it was a fluke. Um, does that type of stuff affect you, or does it just make it much more sweeter should you win here today? I mean, it makes it sweeter because if I beat him in a day, which I fully plan to do, he's got to come on camera and admit I was wrong. He has to come on and admit that it was not a fluke. He's got to come on and give him my respect that I deserve. So that adds a little to this victory today. Uh, Chance, out of the ring, you're a great person, and your last name is just about second to none. But inside the ring, when you look at not just your performance, but – your faction's performance, it's a rare day and an odd season where corruption has to look up at the dungeon. So how was the faction handling not being on top and how quickly can you get back up to that number one slot? Look, we, we know we have started off pretty cold this year, but we, we started off cold last year. It's not about how you start, it's how you finish. And we are about to get ready to rally and make another run for the top of the standings again, starting here. And last question for you, Chance, before we start going here. You, you talk about moving up, getting there. You, you've been competing at an elite level since you entered in your rookie season. Um, the, I know that how much that singles belt is like the big goal. But because of how you, well you did in the IG tournament winning it last year and beating someone like a Robert Parker, Kalinowski, does that a win last year make you say, look, I, I really think that Chance three belts is a possible thing? Look, it's a possible thing, yes. Could I do it if I wanted to? Absolutely. I'm taking this one step at a time. I'm looking at what's in front of me, not what's ahead. What's in front of me right now is a spider. I'm going to squash a second time. All right, well, thank you to the Cobra, and now we bring in the spider. All right, Mark, so both the Cobra, Chance Ellison, the spider, Robert Parker, they are here. We are ready. What are the rules of round number one? Yes, we do have laws, ladies and gentlemen, not mere theories anymore. And they are an inner geekdom. You get 10 questions in round at number one because we love it so much. Each question is still worth a point. No penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round at number one. We'll ask the question. Competitors have about 15 seconds to get that correct answer from the back of their noggin onto whatever writing surface they prefer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera. At the same time, you verbalize your attempt into your microphone. You each have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. You're not sure you heard a question right. You want us to repeat it. You want to buy another 15 seconds to think harder. Use the JTE rule. You can also simply say repeat. You also each have one challenge. You may use at any point throughout the three-round match. Christian, it's going to be a grudge match, and this one could go the distance and then some. All right, so we start with Ellison. Are you ready? Let's get it. Parker, are you ready? Absolutely. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. Round number one. Question number one. We're going to start with dystopian future and time travel. Who plays the villainous character known as the Deacon in Waterworld? Oh, would that be Demon Deacon as in Wake Forest? Oh, I knew you were going to say that. I don't know how, but I knew it because I've known you for right so here. long. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we're going to start here with Chance Ellison. Dennis Hopper. Yes, and the Cobra. Uh, I'm the spider, Dennis Hopper. One, one. All right. All right, Mark, question number two. Here we go. Spider Cobra. Now we go to Middle Earth for your second question. In The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, Bilbo gives narration about which dwarf king who had first possessed the Arkenstone and named it the King's Jewel? Parker looks like he's already written that too. Yeah, he's quick. I mean, he's a spider for a reason. Remember how good he did in that exhibition, Lord of the Rings. Five, four, three, Two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we're going to start with Parker. King Thror. Yes. And Ellison. Thror. You got it. All right. Here's question number three. You're going to go to Marvel movies. 
Which Marvel film involves the characters Mark and Abby Miller, a father and daughter who seek protection from assassins? Ooh, precarious. Just not very nice, I don't think. Not a good day. Not a good day for them at all. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with Ellison. Everyone's favorite, Electra. Correct. And Cobra. I mean, I say it again, Parker. Electra. It's really good. It's really messing me up. <laughs> Sorry. You see, Christian, one of them is the Cobra, and the other one is yep. the Spider. Yep. I got it. I got it. All right, here we go. So here's the. It's like it's like Your it's next. like Will Ferrell. It's like Will Ferrell and Anchor Anchorman. All right, here's the. Uh, here's the next one. Thank goodness my last name is not McGee. Your next question is in the category of fantasy, sci-fi, and the question. In the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Narnia hasn't had a Christmas in how many years, according to Mr. Tumnus? And Christian, I gotta tell you, Narnia sounds like an awful situation. You're hanging out one day, you walk through a painting, and now all these talking animals put pressure on you to save their kingdom? You've never heard of these people? It's a lot of pressure. Five. Four, three, oh, thanks. two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. We're going to start with the spider. 100 years. Yes. And for Ellison. 100. So right now, it is tied up 4-4 four, four, as we get to question five. And now we're going to go to Jurassic Park. How many composers have contributed scores to the Jurassic Park franchise. Looking at a Let's tight go. battle here. Already. Look at these two, and you sense there's going to be a lot more correct answers today. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Hands up, please. And we start with Chance. Three. Yes, Robert. Three. Still tied up, Mark. As we get to question six. That's in the world of Star Trek, and it is. Which Star Trek film features a research laboratory on the space station Regular One that is attacked by the film's villain? And shout out to Say those three what? Jurassic Park composers. John Williams, Don Davis, and Michael uh, Giacchino, Christian? Giacchino. Giacchino. And five. Four. Oh, close. Three. Two, one. Pens down. Hands up, please. And this time we start with Parker. Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Yes. And Ellison. Didn't have it. Didn't have it. So so Parker gets first blood here and goes up 6-5. Six, 6-5 five. Six, five as we get to our next question. Our next question. It is going to be a mixed bag. Who plays... Frank Shaver, a police detective with bulletproof skin in the film Project Power. Mark, I have to ask you, what the hell is Project Power? I was going to say, what is bulletproof skin? You and I both perplexed. Project Power, Project Power. Five, four, three, two, no idea. one. Pens down, hands up, and Mr. Ellison. Joseph Gordon Levitt. Yes, and Parker. Joseph Gordon Levitt. So both of these two guys have heard of that film, and I must have been sleeping. All right, what is the next question? It's question eight. It is. Are we making up movies now? And they're still getting the questions right? Yes. Still getting All right. right. Let's go to Spider-Man films. We've heard of these. The question, which Spider-Man film features cameo performances from the actors Joel McHale and Emily Deschanel? So, as we see at the moment, Mark, it's 7-6, Parker with a one-point lead, and still playing perfect thus far. Gotta get Christian a Project Power hat to wear. Five. I would. Four. Three, I know. As long as it's cool. Two. One. All right, pens down. Hands up, please, and we're going to start with Parker. Spider-Man 2. That's correct. And Chance. Spider-Man the second. All right, so... Right now, at the moment, the score is Robert Parker with a one-point lead, 
Ellison 7 as we get to question 9, graphic novels. Who plays Doc, a saloon owner who is also the town doctor in the film Cowboys and Aliens? So that's the one. I think we've been doing movie reviews so long together, buddy. I'm pretty sure we saw that in the theater together. I think we did. Or I, I think you saw it. All right. Four. No, we saw it. Three. Two. I interviewed you. One. Hands down. Hands up, please. And we start with Chance Ellison. That's Sam Rockwell? Yes, it is. And Parker. It's the great Sam Rockwell. All right. Well, so far, Robert Parker has been having a great round as he is perfect at the moment, but he needs to get this one in order to get that bonus question. It is 9-8. It is the 10th question. Here we go. And these two fellows have a little bit of a swashbuckler in them, and so we go to swashbuckling adventure. Your question for a point. Tony Amendola and Michael Emerson appear in what 2000s swashbuckling film? All right, so Parker obviously looking to try to get himself keep up with that amazing accuracy that he's had, if he can add to that by getting a perfect round. And we go with five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, hands up, and we're going to start with Parker for the perfect round. The Legend of Zorro. Perfect round for Parker. And for Ellison. The quite terrible Legend of Zorro. Yes, all right, so... Ellison only misses one, but Parker missed nothing. So it is 10-9, and now, Parker, you and only you will be getting this. You don't have to write it down. You just have to answer it. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Here's your question. Which Transformers film begins with a Spanish-speaking soldier named Fig wanting to eat alligator meat? Oh. Uh it's just called Transformers, the 2007 one. That is correct. For one more point. Alligator Meat gives that extra point to the spider, and he finds himself up by two. It is 11-9 heading into round number two. Mark, what are the rules around number two? Hey, however you get your protein is just fine with us here at the Schmodown. Round number two is the wheel round. The wheel of fate, doom, justice, destiny, all those things that are themes of inner geekdom movies. Each competitor gets a spin at that wheel once you settle on a particular realm. You'll hear five questions in that genre. Each question is worth two points. No penalty for missing a question, but stealing, yeah, it's available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer at that point. The point value recedes to a mere one. So it is a two-point lead for the Spider over the Cobra. Cobra with an impressive first round, but Spider with a perfect one and nailing the bonus question. So we go to you, Mr. Parker. Would you like to spin that Thar wheel first or defer to your opponent? I will defer to my opponent. What's up, Chance? How you feeling over there, buddy? Feeling good. Feeling good. Yeah? Good. I don't think you're too worried about those two points right now. It's still so early in the game that there is plenty of time for things to go terribly wrong for him and plenty of time for things to go very, very well for us. You're looking great. You're sounding great. I know you're in the zone. I know you got this. I don't want to say any of the other crap that you don't need to hear right now. I want to get that wheel up. I want to spin it. I want to see what we get for you here. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. The wheel is up and now the spin is in from Corruption. It's an all business queen of corruption today, Christian. Yeah. And it looks like it's going to be... S whoop, no, X-Men. X-Men. So you're going to get uh, 60 seconds of the side chance if you want to stay on X-Men. Okay. I've seen all these movies. Mm -hmm. I think there's some broader stuff on there, so I'm not as familiar with as I am with the X-Men. I think mm -hmm. I like it. Do it. All right, let's go. Let's take it. Do it if you like it. All right, so the choice is in for the X-Men films, and we'll now bring back Parker. All right, so Chance, you're going to get five questions in the realm of X-Men. Are you ready? And um, Here we go. Rose Byrne played the role of Moira Metagard in how many X-Men films? Two. Correct. First class and apocalypse. Here's question two. Who plays 
Rain Sinclair, R-A-H-N-E Sinclair, also known as Wolfsbane in New Mutants. Maisie Williams. Two more points. In X-Men, 2000 X-Men, which mutant kills Sabretooth? Five, four, three. Multiple choice. Is it A, Storm, B, Jean Grey, C, Wolverine, D, Cyclops? Cyclops. That's correct for one more point. So, so far, that is three questions, two left. Here is the next one. You'll find Rogue in Meridian, Mississippi, where she accidentally harms her boyfriend at the beginning of which X-Men film? It's X-Men, the first one. That's correct. All right, here is the last question for Chance Ellison in this round in the X-Men films. In which X-Men film will you hear Charles Xavier say, just because someone stumbles and loses their path, it doesn't mean they're lost forever? X-Men Days Future Past. It's correct for two more points. Big round for Chance Ellison. Good round for Chance Ellison as he picks up... Yeah. Two more points here and finds himself now with a seven-point lead over Parker. It's 18-11, and now it is the Spiders' chance to spin. I was just going over a partial list of some of my favorite things. Number one, being greeted by Kevin in the winner's circle. Number two, En Vogue's cameo in Coming to America. He still got yep. it. Yep. And number three, Watching Robert Parker scare the living crap out of everybody he goes up against. Now, you know, Ellis, I'm not a smart man. I only got a seventh grade education, but I do something better than most people in this league, and that's have fun. And I'm going to have fun watching Parker thrash Chase Ellenson and send Shannon back to that truck stop in Tulsa where she used to pump gas before she started her Schmodown career. Parker, today is your day. You have set the tone. Let's take care of business and spin that wheel, baby. Let's make it happen. All right, so the wheel is up, and we take the spin here from the spider. All right, we see, was obviously. The villain who framed Roger Rabbit. So you saw him on the docks of the Rocky franchise, but uh, sw oh, that's swashbuckling. That's swashbuckling adventure. So mm -hmm. you got 60 seconds to decide, starting now. We what like this category. Yeah, the dungeon's been putting in work on this. Let's make it happen. Let's do it. Let's keep. Final answer. All right. Yeah. Final answer. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you to Kaiser and to the spider. So, Mark, Swashbuckling Adventure has been the choice for the spider. So you'll be answering. You'll be asking five questions to the spider in the Swashbuckling Adventures category. Yep. Here we go. We first met in Green Bay, then out in Los Angeles, and now our paths cross again in the virtual world where I have five swashbuckling questions for you should you miss or your opponent to possibly steal. For two points, Spider, who plays unscrupulous railroad tycoon Latham Cole in The Lone Ranger? Tom Wilkinson. That's a very good Tom, and that is correct for two points. And all of a sudden, that seven-point lead from Chance Ellison is now five points. Parker has a chance to cut it to three with this next one. In Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, Blackbeard is able to control every part of his ship using what? His sword. That's probably a metaphor for something else, and that is correct for sure two is. more points. <laughs> oh, yeah. Moving. Round number two. So far, your third question in the category of swashbuckling adventure in the classic Raiders of the Lost Ark. According to legend, what city is the Lost Ark supposedly buried in? The legendary city of Tanis. Tanis. I was going to go with Schenectady, but you are correct for two points. And here is where we stand. 
It was a seven-point lead when Parker began his round two. It is now just a one-point lead for the Cobra. The Spider could overtake it with his penultimate swashbuckling question. Here we go. What is the name of Zorro's horse in the mask of Zorro? That would be Tornado. It's a cool word and an even cooler name for a horse. And now the Spider is on top of the Cobra. And Christian, he's looking to gain as much of a three-point advantage to trap a snake in a web going into round three. We'll find out right now with your final swashbuckling adventure question, and it is, who plays Cutler Beckett in the Pirates of the Caribbean series? Tom Hollander. Glad you got that ER in the end. That is correct for two points, and Christian, it was a great Round two for the Cobra, an even better one for the Spider. Now he has a three-point lead as we careen into round three. Yeah, that was a really scary round um, by the Spider. But uh, as you said, Ellison had a, a, a very good round also in round two. And we see ourselves 21-18 as we get into the final round. It is round number three. Anyone's ball game because a total of 10 points are possibly available for each competitor. They could get those points by answering three questions. Those questions we get from you. You give us a series of numbers. These numbers may range from 1 to 16. We need three from each competitor. You may not pick the same numerals as your opponent. Each integer corresponds to a unique category of inner geekdom schmodown mystery. First question is worth two points. Next one worth three. Final question, five points. So, Mr. Parker, we go to you and your spiderly ways first. You have a three-point lead, so you have the option of giving us your three lucky numbers first. What do you got? You're, you're, oh, muted, you're muted, Parker. sir. Again? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, let's do eight, nine, and four. So Parker just had his three numbers of eight, nine, and four. And for Allison? I'll go six, 16, and five. Six, 16, and five. So that's eight, nine, and four for Parker. Six, 16, and five for the Cobra. Am I on seconds, or Parker. am I muted? You know, I can't tell. Is this yeah. going? Can we hear me? We're live. We're large and in charge. Parker, outside of passing go and collecting my $200, there's nothing I love more than beating corruption. Beating them in the schmodown, beating them in hungry, hungry hippos, pin the tail on the Kalinowski. I don't care what gate. I want to beat them so bad. I want you to clear the slate right now. Take exact revenge. Okay? The dungeon was up at 6 in the morning, training you. Adam Witt made you pancakes. That's because we believe yeah. you and we love you, brother. Finish strong. Today is your day. Thanks, guys. The revenge tour continues, man. Let's finish it out. Seems to me they forgot that there's still one more round to play. Um, they haven't beaten us yet because they still have to go through and answer some questions. So whatever Kaiser's chirping about over there, don't even bother. And also, Kaiser, you wish I would pump your gas. Chance, you're still in this. You've got all your JTEs left. If you have a challenge that sounds legit, throw it out there. Don't give up on yourself here. It's three points. Anything can happen. Check, check, round check. three is still round three. Who's speaking during my time? Is that Kaiser's idiot? Stupid man. Now's the time to mute yourself, Kaiser. Now you mute. Jesus. Anyway, Chance, you're still locked in. You still got this. How you feeling? Yeah, I feel great. Look, multiple choice. One. Let's look at every question, right? And look, third round, I'm doing pretty solid in our training sessions on the you know, my threes and fives. So I'm ready to go. Ten points. Let's get Let's it. Get it. Let's get it, baby. I believe in you. All you right, thank you, to, thank you to Corruption, and now we bring back Parker. All right, Mark, Parker is back, and now we will start round number three. Chance Ellison is going to start us off here, and he's got to hit his two and his three, um, or at least get his three to, to tie it. And we will start him with category six, Mark, and that would be in the realm of Planet of the Apes. I enjoy that planet. All right, Chance, for two points and to cut Parker's lead to a mere one point. Your question. Who directed 2001's Planet of the Apes? For some reason, Tim Burton. That's, that's correct on all counts. And the score is now 21 to 20. Chance Ellison can take the lead with his three-point question. All right, so the three-point question for Chance in order to avoid the TKO, it comes in the realm of DC, which is category 16. It does. So Chance for the lead. 
to avoid a TKO. In the film Justice League, Alfred says, uh, do I know you? To which Justice League member? Cyborg. Alfred always has those quick quips, and that is correct. And it's not going to be a TKO today, Christian. And Parker's not getting off that easy. Now Chance Ellison has a two-point lead, and the Spider has to answer some questions. That's right. Parker, in order to tie it, just needs to hit his two-point question, which comes in the realm of Category 8, and that would be graphic novels. Graphic novels. All right, graphic novels it is. Don't worry, not the ones you read. These are film adaptations of graphic novels. And your question, Robert, for the tie, which actor plays Adrian Veet, a.k.a. Ozymandias, in Watchmen? Matthew Good. And it is good that you got that question correct, because I'm not sure I pronounced his last name right, but you got it. It is a tied ball game, 23-all. It's 23-23. We're going to stick with the spider here, Robert Parker, who's going to try to take the lead and force Ellison to answer his five-pointer. So, Robert Parker, in order to take the lead, you chose category nine, comic book movies. Comic book movies. Comic books generally easier to read than graphic novels, but again, these are the movies. Here's your question for a three-point lead, Robert. She would tell Edgy of four plays James Copley, a former CIA agent grieving the loss of his wife, in what film? The Old Guard. Could be another movie we made up, Christian, but that is correct nonetheless for three points, and now we go back to the Cobra for a five-pointer. He's got to have. Yeah, he's got to hit this one in order to force Robert Parker to hit his five. If he hits it, it forces it back to Parker. However, if he misses... Parker will go on to win and face Chandru in a number one contender match. All right, so, Ellison, you chose category five for your five-pointer, and that would be a mixed bag. So, right. here is your question, Mark. All right, Chance. For five points, the lead to stay alive in the match. Your mixed bag question is, who plays the gangster, Eddie Valentine, in 1991's The Rocketeer? Five, four. Read the question. First one. All right, two JT rules remain. Who plays the gangster, Eddie Valentine? In 1991's The Rocketeer. Five. Four. Repeat the question. Second one. All right. You have one remaining. Who plays the gangster Eddie Valentine in 1991's The Rocketeer? John Polito. Your winner, ladies and gentlemen, Robert the Spider Parker. Go. The answer, Marcus. Paul Sorvino was the answer. Paul Sorvino was the answer, and Robert nice. Parker still muted. Thank is, yeah, Mark the Spider now is four and one. Taking the victory from his nemesis, Chance Ellison, four and one. And he's going on to play Chandru, the chosen Don Dapani, in a number one contender match. And I know that Kaiser is excited about that to get some revenge once again on, uh, on, on Chandru. So, all right, gentlemen, congratulations. That is three points picked up again for the dungeon. We're going to throw it to Jen in just a moment. So, thank you. Um, that, was, uh, that was Parker. I mean, you look at that that performance by chance against most competitors in the inner geekdom division. He, he he's, he, it's, it goes he wins. Yeah. But Parker, I I think perfect again. I mean, the guy is firing on all cylinders. This is the Parker that we heard so much about. This is a Parker who has stepped up his game, and this is a scary scary contender. Don Dapani versus Parker 
is something of uh, that's a legendary matchup right now. That that can go anyway. It's going to be nuts. It's going to be great. And so you look at Robert Parker and his career trajectory thus far. He came on like gangbusters and then hit sort of a tough patch. But when you go look at our fantastic statistics team at the SchmodownLive.com, headed up by Frankie Numbers Janish, you look at what you mentioned in our pre-show, his accuracy, his numbers, his stats speak for themselves. And that bore fruit today in the form of beating a legendary competitor in Chance the Cobra Ellison. So the spider further cements his legacy, but like he said in his interview before we got the match going, he's also thinking about Chandra, and now he's going to get his shot. Well, we're going to hear a lot about that potential matchup. We're going to hear about this matchup today. We're going to hear about all of it because both Kaiser and Parker, who like to talk, are standing by with Jen Sturger. Jen? Gentlemen, congratulations on another victory. Kaiser, I'm just so... I mean, I should be used to seeing you in the winner's circle at this point, No. I mean, how many times I got asked to see the dog? It's like the third time I've won a match and I haven't seen Kevin. I said a partial list of my favorite things. Seeing Kevin in the winter. There he is. This is why I play I'll the game. I'll just let him do Kevin. my interviews from now on for you, if that's the way you'd like it. I mean, it. he's trained by the best. Listen, Jen. <laughs> Jen, the dungeon is the future. Okay, we, we are the new mutants. And corruption is the old mutants. They're the ones that live in the low-rent retirement home with poor plumbing. Dungeon is the Watchman. Corruption is pretty much the Watch Alongs. We are the future of this league. We are going to win a faction title when big players like Parker put up big wins. That's what happens. We're on a tear now. Now, now Parker said something. We ain't done with Chandra yet. You think we just wanted to beat up on him once? Chandra, I hope you're watching because this one's going to feel even harder. This one's going to be a real tough one to take when Parker kicks your teeth in. He went perfect again. So buckle up. I hope you're studying. Parker, how did it feel to be able to avenge your last loss to Chance? It was good, but I, I got to say, you know, it, we're, we're talking about it being a revenge tour. Up until this point, it really has just been all business, all right? This, I'm in the business of winning matches. I'm in the business of playing perfect. You know, what I did against Hannah, what I did here today against Chance, I didn't enjoy it, all right? It was just business against Chandru. I'm going to enjoy it. That one is going to be fun. That one is personal. Do you feel like your time against Chance and Hannah this season and, and those wins have somehow propelled you into getting past the things that may have been considered your weaknesses before? Yeah, definitely. Along with the rest of the dungeon, I mean, I, we have the best crew around, uh, and that goes for every sense of the word, whether it's studying personally, you know, whatever it takes. We're here for each other, and I think we've proven that throughout this season. Uh, as far as my weaknesses, you know, I did take the loss last year to Chance really hard, and I went into the shadows for uh, nine months, eight months, ten months, however long it was, and I came out and haven't missed a question since. So thank you, Chance, for beating me into perfection last year. I mean, we have to obviously discuss the elephant in the room. Uh, Kaiser, I don't feel like there's a manager out there that has quite the game footage on Chandru that you do. Let's face it, you've already, you know, you've already faced him twice with Smets and Mara. You know, what is it about Chandru that drives you insane? <laughs> like, what, what is it? What is it now? I mean, it's, it's stupid fucking haircut. Oh, sorry. I, I, you can beat that out. I, you know, <laughs> I, his, stu his stupid haircut, for one, is aggravating. Uh, I mean, the, the guy dresses like, like an old lady at a bus stop. He has no fashion sense. If you're going to go by, if you're going to have a team named Swag, maybe actually get him some gear that he can wear in public because he looks like Norman Bates' mother the way he dresses. It's a total embarrassment. He has no class. And the dungeon... It's all class. Look at Parker's got a three thousand dollar suit on. I mean, and, and after this match, we're gonna buy him a new one. I'd like to see. I think green. You know, maybe get a green reddish kind of thing going on. I don't know, Jen. You could probably that'll work. With that. But let's face it, Kaiser. A Chancer is one of those players that just is incredibly good at the head games aspect and getting in his opponent's head. And it's like, Parker, what are you guys going to do to combat that? Uh, not miss any questions. Uh, that's what I plan to do. Uh, same thing I've been doing for the last two matches. Look, I, I can handle the head games, right? I, I've played people in the past, not just uh, here in the Schwarm, but in years prior. I, I, I know how to handle that. And not only that, I have the crew behind me to help me prep for that as well. You think nobody can talk trash on you while you miss questions like a Bateman or a, uh, someone like that, right? You got, I have people around uh, to help me prep for those situations and both the trivia, the gameplay, whatever it is, I am firing on all cylinders and this is my season. 
Well, I'm sure Swag and Chandru are both watching this match right now, and so I guess I have to say to you two gentlemen, is there anything that you would like to say to them before I let you go? Dueling with Ch dueling with Chandru and Winston is is like dueling with two unarmed men. Okay, uh, we we are going to take advantage of them. We're, we're going to beat them up. And look, I mean, I, first of all, the guy you want to play before you play Chandru is Chance Ellison, who's one of the greatest yeah. players in this game. So I'd like to thank him for putting up a damn good fight today because he is one of the best. And and this is the ultimate mock match. Uh, I mean, when you get to play against a great one like that now. Right. Chance, I've been telling you for years, you got to lose. You got to lose that manager. She's dragging you down. You can do so many better things in this league. OK, uh, but 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 Jen, um, it's not over yet. The saga continues. Uh, you know, we may be in this in this in the lead in the standings now, but I only accept first place at the end of the season after the last point is scored. So this dungeon crew is going to keep rolling and I'm proud of the work they're putting in. And, and I, I, I couldn't be more happy. But hey, we, we start work again tomorrow. So, yeah. And we couldn't do any of it without a leader like you, man. Get Chandra some new clothes, for Christ's sakes. He really Bum. does need to upgrade his wardrobe, it's true. Bum. Parker, any final words to Chandra and Swag from yourself? Uh, like uh, Kaiser said, I would say upgrade your wardrobe, maybe upgrade your manager, uh, and get ready, because this train is not slowing down. I'm not taking tomorrow off. I'm not taking the next month off, all right? You saw what happened when Mara played him. I'm going to do the exact same thing and uh, maybe even play uh, my best game ever. Maybe he'll make me hit a five. Who knows? Well, best of luck to you and congratulations again, gentlemen, on a well-fought victory. Thank you. All right. So obviously the dungeon gearing up for that Chandru match, and that's going to be a legendary match here. We, we haven't seen Chandru since his title loss against du the dungeon's Mara Kanopic. So they do have game tape on them that side, but this is a different Chandru than the Chandru that faced Mara. At the time when he played Mara, he was a little more, um, you know, he wasn't vibing with with Winston at the time. They seem to have gotten that out of the way. They seem to be ready, and he. This is a number one contender match to see who they're going to be facing. So this is going to be, um, this is going to be some kind of a matchup. Yeah, whatever magic Winston worked at the beginning of the season to write his faction, they're going to need a little more of that if they want to beat yeah. somebody of Robert the Spider Parker's caliber or even a chance of Cobra Ellison for that matter. Now, obviously, Chance took the loss today, so he will not be facing Chandru in the interim, but he still gave one hell of an effort today. And when you talk about managers, I don't think it's any issue with corruption at all. I think they still have their ducks in a row. They're looking to get on a hot streak. They were hoping that that might start today was not the case. The dungeon takes the ale. It'd be nice if Kaiser could just get out of the way and let us look at that gorgeous Van Halen album behind him. But now we are going to go to Corruption. Chance the Cobra Ellison taking a tough loss here today. His manager, Shannon Barney, back with our own Jen Sturger. Tough loss today again for Corruption, Shannon. But you still seem to have a smile on your face. You have to feel pretty good about the way Chance played this afternoon. He played... Absolutely incredible. The kid missed two questions, and Indy agrees. Indy agrees that he played really, really well today. You know, it, and it's hard. What? I'm, how many times can you say this? When you're playing against a perfect game, what can you do? And and Christian, oh my goodness, you shut up. Mike must be coming back. Any other player, any other Intergeaton player in this match against Chance likely would have lost. But when you play a perfect game like Parker did today. Unfortunately, you don't have the room for any kind of error. That aside, Chance is playing out of his mind. He was playing so great at an elite level like he always does. So yeah, I'm proud of him. I'm always proud of him. He's a beast. He's, he's insane. Chance, the war between you and Parker rages on. Uh, any thoughts on today's match? No, I mean, look, I've known Parker longer than anybody in this league. So I know the one thing you cannot do is give him any leeway. That's what I did, and that's why I lost today. But... Yeah, I mean, look, I picked it up. I still, I guess I still played, still played well. Only missed two questions. Uh, five, my five questions come from a barrage of mediocre to bad movies, so those don't stick with me as much. Um, but yeah, no, I really wanted to win today. Mostly because the only reason I wanted to win was for for this lady right here because she deserves a win. I wish I could put the points for you. I do apologize, but you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick it up. I'll pick it up. No, you guys put in the work, and that's what matters. It doesn't always translate to points sometimes. You know what I mean? And that's why we just keep looking forward. 
So looking forward, where do we go from here, Chance? You know, are, are, is your focus going to be in inner geekdom? You know, where's your head at in terms of what do you want to do next in the league? Well, look, nobody in this league can do what I can, which I can do just about anything Shan needs me to do. I know we got the tournament coming up. I would love to be our rep in that tournament, but we'll see how we'll see how that's working out. If Shan wants to put me in, I'll gladly enter back in and win that thing again. I got singles coming up. I got teams coming up. My trend, my look, partner says trend doesn't stop. My trend doesn't stop either. I got, I got plenty of things to do. I got plenty of points to pick up my faction. Absolutely, and Shannon, let's face it, that's when corruption did the most damage last season is during those tournaments. So, how are you looking forward to tournament season this year? Indy was speaking for me. We love tournament season. He loves turn. We all love tournament season here. For real. And this is where starts are you kidding me everyone's hyped up for tournament season i will say though you know the only thing uh who mentioned it earlier where we where we're looking up at the dungeon and how that must stink and and it stinks because they don't wash their butts so it's really really smelly <laughs> looking I think that up was at your i don't i'm not i'm not a fan of that so i'd like to get above them um so we don't have to smell that anymore but right now you know we got to put in the work and and we got to hope for hope for our luck to change here. Well, tough loss today again, Shannon and Chance. But again, tournament season is upon us, and I cannot wait to see and the hey. damage you guys are about to do. Hey, 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 Parker, we ain't done. We're one one. Got to have that rubber mess on time. Let's do it. I'll beat you. Three. I'll beat you again. Amen to that. All right. So, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Shannon said it. I said it before too. This is this is nothing for chance to say. Oh, I can't hang in the IG league. Of, of course he can. The IG division. Of course he can. He, he was. He didn't. Uh, he he missed one or two questions. Whatever it was. It's just that Parker. Parker's on a mission. I think that if you look at that's the the what he had in his eye in the IG division. Um, that's what Chance had last season. In the IG division. I think Chance has that in teams. I think Chance has that in singles. I don't take away from the way that Chance played. There's just, there is a, like, there's a, this type of level. And then there's just that step up of that person that just will not quit until they accomplish what they want to do. And that's where Parker is at this moment. Yeah, well, it's tough to tell the look in Chance's eye because he's got those cool-looking sunglasses. But, yeah, you would think Robert Parker and Chance Ellison, we haven't seen the last of them do battle. Hell, the way Chance acted in that post-match interview, I think he's ready to do another three rounds right now. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm told we don't have time for that. But these guys are going to be rivals for a long time to come, for many seasons more in the Schmodan. And we got another classic chapter in that rivalry written today. That's right. So... Chandru Dondapani, the former movie trivia Schmodown inner geekdom champion of the world, will be back at it in a number one contender match against the spider Robert Parker. He finally gets his opportunity for an opportunity at a championship, and he's got to go through the chosen one in order to do it. Here are the standings as they are today. And as you see, the dungeon adding more points to that lead at the moment. And Jen mentioned it tournament season not too far away we have had a couple of tournaments obviously whether it's the teams and the um excuse me not the team yeah the teams and the star wars and but there's all the massive big ultimate schmodown tournaments and they're right around the corner all you guys what you can do is you join patreon patreon.com slash schmodown you get our three pay-per-views we're gonna get some of those finals matches from those tournaments that i mentioned upcoming matches title matches all of it. You go to patreon.com slash schmodown at the $10 tier. You get all of them. Or you can go to the schmodownlive.com. We're going to be bringing back live events sooner than later. So make sure you check the schmodownlive.com for tickets to where we might be. So go over there. Check it out. Keep informed on the schmodown Twitter. Go follow us at the schmodown so you know when those tickets are on sale that you can be one of the first people to come back and see us live when we're live going to be a fun one it's going to be a good one and it's going to be a great season and it already has been a sterling match filled performances packed season eight war the movie trivia showdown and it's only going to get more intense so for our entire crew behind the scenes here at skybound our questions written by our head writer and his incredible staff that would be pj campbell that is christian harloff over there for chance robert shannon 
Kaiser. I am merely Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. Thanks to the great Jen Sturger and all of you for watching today.